Tyler here on Elizabeth Mavis. Just kidding! Obviously it's me, Elizabeth, and I am in full cosplay and these are not my eyebrows. <laughs> so, but I did finish my Rose Tyler jacket, which I'm wearing, and it turned out really great. I'm super pleased about it and I'm really excited to hear to talk about it. If you remember, this beautiful purple color that I eventually got to was not the original color of this this faux leather that I started with. It started out as kind of a shark skin gray and I painted it with uh, Angelus leather paints which turned out to be an awesome awesome product and so I'm gonna we're gonna go down to the sewing room and I'm gonna show you a little bit of my process uh, which took took place over three days maybe four days I don't know who remembers it was hey y'all I am starting work on my painting of my fabric for my Rose Tyler jacket. As you can see, it's all laid out here on my cutting table on, on pieces of cardboard, and it is going to be kind of epic. So I'm going to listen to some Wagner. I've got my TARDIS filled with some tea, my Angelus paint, and a foam brush, and I am ready to get going. Okay. Day two of painting the Rose Tyler jacket. So you can see that I got to almost white on all of, on all of my pieces after about five coats of the white paint, and I am ready to go ahead and add my my purple blue. So this is the Angelus Violet uh, plus Sapphire, and I did a ratio of four to one in favor of the purple. And I think this is going to be a really close color for what I'm going for. And I've got a lot more paint in out, so I'm just going to do that. Hey y'all, day three of painting the Rose Tyler jacket. So you can see I finally got up to the purple that I was looking for. It's kind of this blue tinted purple and I love it. I, I went yesterday and I bought a really nice brush and that made all the difference it's got it's really it's really soft and it just really handled the the finish on the paint so much better than the foam brush so that was definitely an upgrade and then I also went and I got this uh, product called Resolute let me see if it'll focus yeah uh, at the leather store that we have a Tandy leather store uh, not too far away from us so I went there and the guy recommended that as a finisher for over the top of the paint to protect it. So that's what I am getting ready to do now. So I, I mixed it about half and half with water and I think that with my, my lovely brush, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a nice, a nice finish over the top of it. And then hopefully by the end of the day I can get sewing. So, but I did finish my Rose Tyler jacket, which I'm wearing, and it turned out really great. I'm super pleased about it, and I'm really excited to hear to talk about it. If you remember, this beautiful purple color that I eventually got to was not the original color of this, this faux leather that I started with. It started out as kind of a shark skin gray, and I painted it with uh, Angelus leather paints, which turned out to be an awesome, awesome product. And so I'm gonna, we're gonna go down to the sewing room and I'll show you a little bit of my process, uh, which took took place over three days, maybe four days. I don't know who remembers. It was a while. Uh, the actual sewing went actually qu pretty quickly once I had everything cut out and went along. I, I did the jacket over about a weekend, which is pretty which is pretty quick for a jacket. I think and there were really no hassles but there's definitely some tricks about sewing with, fo with faux leather which I'll get to in a little bit but first let's talk about the pattern so I started out with birth style 10 2010 101 which is kind of this it's a leather bomber jacket pattern 
and it had um, it's kind of it's a really boxy sort of pattern which is not what I was going for I was going definitely for something more fitted but it had a lot of the elements of Rose's jacket that I so I thought it would be really easy to adapt this pattern which it turned out to be it, it really was it had it had the the collar with the the knit the knit upper collar and the the knit the knit band at the bottom and on the cuffs so that was really that was pretty simple and other than like length issues I did have a lot of, of seam of seams that I needed to add to make this look more like Rose's jacket um, I guess in the cosplay world Rose's jacket is really difficult to find so it's just as well to you know do your own except that you have to sew faux, faux leather which is really it's not the easiest process, but I got through it, and I'm really glad that I did it because I'll be all the more ready to tackle a real leather jacket later on. So the first thing I did with this pattern was I started out with this back. As you can see, it's kind of it's it's a really plain back, and it's separated. It's into a yoke, and it has a back pleat. I don't need the back pleat. I didn't want the back pleat, so I got rid of that. And also, her her jacket has has several, there's three pieces in the front of the jacket and three pieces on, on the back um, to, for three pattern pieces for, for the lower back and three pattern pieces on the front. So the first thing I did was I made that center back piece and I just kind of eyeballed this really with my, my French curve. Her, her center piece is maybe a little bit narrower than mine after I looked, I, I went back and looked at some of the production shots, but I got, I got pretty close. And then this other one, I kind of, I, I just sort of, I, again, I just kind of eyeballed it. And I really just, I, I really kind of made it too shallow. So I'll show you on my, I'll show you on my muslin really quick. Hey everyone, it's Rose Tyler here on Elizabeth Mavis. Just kidding, obviously it's me, Elizabeth. And I'm in full cosplay and these are not my eyebrows. <laughs> So, but I did finish my Rose Tyler jacket, which I'm wearing, and it turned out really great. I'm super pleased about it, and I'm really excited to hear to talk about it. If you remember, this beautiful purple color that I eventually got to was not the original color of this, this faux leather that I started with. It started out as kind of a shark skin gray, and I painted it with uh, Angelus leather paints, which turned out to be an awesome, awesome product. And so I'm gonna, we're going to go down to the sewing room, and i show you. A little bit of my process, uh, which took which took place over three days, maybe four days. I don't know who remembers. It was a while. Uh, the actual sewing went actually qu pretty quickly once I had everything cut out and went along. I, I did the jacket over about a weekend, which is pretty which is pretty quick for a jacket. I think and there were really no hassles but there's definitely some tricks about sewing with, fo with faux leather which I'll get to in a little bit but first let's talk about the pattern so I started out with birth style 10 2010 101 which is kind of this it's a leather bomber jacket pattern and it had um, it's kind of it's a really boxy sort of pattern which is not what I was going for I was going definitely for something more fitted but it had a lot of the elements of Rose's jacket that I so I thought it would be really easy to adapt this pattern which it turned out to be it, it really was it had it had the, the collar with the, the knit the knit upper collar and the the knit the knit band at the bottom and on the cuffs so that was really that was pretty simple and other than like length issues I did have a lot of, of seam of seams that I needed to add to make this look more like Rose's jacket um, I guess in the cosplay world Rose's jacket is really difficult to find so it's just as well to you know do your own except that you have to sew faux, faux leather which is really it's not the easiest process, but I got through it, and I'm really glad that I did it because I'll be all the more ready to tackle a real leather jacket later on. So the first thing I did with this pattern was I started out with this back. As you can see, it's kind of it's it's a really plain back, and it's separated. It's into a yoke, and it has a back pleat. I don't need the back pleat. I didn't want the back pleat, so I got rid of that. And also, her her jacket has has several, there's three pieces in the front of the jacket and three pieces on, on the back um, to, 
for three pattern pieces for, for the lower back and three pattern pieces on the front. So the first thing I did was I made that center back piece and I just kind of eyeballed this really with my, my French curve. Her, her center piece is maybe a little bit narrower than mine after I looked, I, I went back and looked at some of the production shots, but I got, I got pretty close. And then this other one, I kind of, I, I just sort of, I, again, I just kind of eyeballed it. And I really just, I, I really kind of made it too shallow. So I'll show you on my, I'll show you on my muslin really quick. So this is the back on, on my muslin. So that was the initial line that I did on, on the back, the back pattern piece. But after, after doing my muslin, I had these weird drag lines. And when I, when I just kind of pinned out the place where, where it, where the seam really wanted to be, I decided that that was actually a better, a better seam line. So that goes up a little bit higher on the armhole you can see and I just I just I moved it over and then I made sure that I added seam allowance when I went back to add it to the other parts. So I've got a side back, a middle back and a center back piece for for the back. And it and the same thing needed to happen on the front. So this is the facing line actually from from the pattern. And so I kept that I kept that for for the front of the piece and then I added I added a side, a side seam. So again, we've got middle and then side, and then I eliminated this dart. But when I went to go back and fit it, I, that dart actually did want to be there, but it actually wanted to come out of it. I needed, I did need another dart, but it needed to come out of the, out of the armhole, and that has to do with me being petite. So that I just, that is something that I pinched out of the armhole, and I turned it around and put it that same amount that it was like it ended up being half an inch so that whole half an inch is gone off the back of it and that's just because I am I am really short between my my shoulder and the and my and my bust so that is that that fabric just didn't want to be there and if you if you see me in, in patterns sometimes where I don't do that it just it just that extra little bit of fabric just hangs out there and it looks terrible and it started to like super annoy me <laughs> so that's but that's that, that's all the pattern work that I had to do for this other than having to slim the seams the original jackets kind of boxy so I when I when I did my muslin I, I narrowed I, I narrowed like all of the seams just a little bit uh, the other thing the other reason why I had to narrow the seams is because this is I'm using a stretch fabric. Um, it doesn't have a lot of stretch. It's only 20%, but it's enough that it would stretch more than a standard leather would, which would be like, like none, just really. So you can see on my muslin, and this this stretch twill was really a great choice for muslin because it has the same amount of stretch as as my stretch as this this stretch faux leather did. Um, and then, okay, so let's talk about dye. Let's talk about dye. So I had to dye the cuffs. This started out as a royal blue color, so I dyed those. I also dyed all of my zippers in there. Oh yeah, I had to add a patch pocket for, for the, the, front, the front part. So that was just, I, I just used my hand as a template and just kind of, I looked at the production shots of Rose's pockets and I did all of that. So there's, there's that pocket. And then there's there's welts in all of those, and then there's there's a welt up here. So construction-wise, that um, that that was a little bit of work, but I am really used to doing welt pockets, so it doesn't really bother me to have to go and do them. Uh, okay, dye. I dyed my zippers. I dyed this inside zipper. This one took the color a little bit better. This is kind of this is the dye more writ dye more royal purple plus a little bit of, of royal blue the these zippers didn't take it quite as well but i still they, they're still kind of a lilac color which i think coordinates really well um so that's dye and let's talk about the lining so there's my tardis yay <laughs> it turned out really cute this is actually a knit from Joann's, I thought I thought the knit would work really well since this is a stretch fabric to have to have a, a lining that had a little bit of give to it. 
but it turns out that this particular knit had more stretch than the outer fabric so what I did so what I did to kind of tame that is that I, I interfaced the entire lining I actually think that this was a really good choice because it, it gave a little bit of extra support to the outer fabric the outer fabric despite it being a uh, a faux leather I actually could interface it well with normal fusible interfacing when I got to using it with the leather I did not press it though because I didn't want to mess up the paint there are a couple places in the jacket where I had to I had to touch up touch up the, the paint um, so I just I, I was really careful to not overhandle any things um, but the so when I added the the interfacing to this to the knit it actually ended up being giving giving the knit the same stretch stretch amount as as the outside of the jacket which was perfect so it was really easy to put those two fabrics together and not have them fight each other and I'm so glad that I that I thought to do that and that it worked out too <laughs> sometimes you try stuff and it doesn't happen and sometimes it works out swimmingly which is great and also the other thing is that the, the, the interfacing really gave the, the outer fabric some support to help it from from wrinkling this fabric is very non-forgiving <laughs> it wrinkles really really easily in the wearing um, a lot more I think than, than regular leather would but it was what what did I pay for it I paid less than ten dollars a yard for it so it was it was it was a great deal and it was it was worth it, it was worth dealing with it not being a hundred percent right and since it's since this is for cosplay and it's not a, a jacket that I'm going to be wearing on a regular right basis I'm okay with it not being a hundred percent okay for me getting the the production details about like the construction lines and all of that was way more important um, and the color too the color took me took me more time to to do um, and then the other thing is that I added I added a snap the original jacket doesn't have a snap but uh, it just makes for the top of the jacket to sit nicer so if I can find it so when it's when it's when it's closed all the way it's just it's just a nicer finish and that's something that you would see on our on a normal leather jacket anyway so that's that uh, anything else usually I would bag usually I would bag the lining but on this one because I was really worried about the paint kind of going having to touch up the paint I ended up just doing doing the inside hem by hand on both the bottom of the jacket and on, and on the inside of the sleeves. I don't know if you can see the on there. So that's that's done by hand all all the way around around the center of that. But that's not that's not a, a, a big deal. And it's really it's really easy to do to do hand hem by with knits. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't a big deal. But ultimately, I'm just I'm really pleased that I got a jacket that I was that I really wanted to make. It, um, it's the right color. It's actually kind of warm. It keeps out the wind really well. And now I'm ready to go fight aliens and go off in the TARDIS and so forth. Hey, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for take, joining me on my cosplay journey through the Doctor Who universe. So, thanks. Happy sewing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for take, joining me on my cosplay journey through the Doctor Who universe. So, thanks. Happy sewing.